view point from overseas and rose for us that we have various different topics with us on the stage on the table first we'll discuss prime minister modi visiting israel on an official trip we'll discuss the outcome of uh, this uh, trip to israel we'll see whether will it have any impact on the middle east politics or whether will it have any impact on south asian politics and then we'll discuss uh, that north korea has recently tested intercontinental ballistic missile we'll see what how will it impact the uh, power dynamics of uh, of east asia uh, and then in the end we'll discuss the most interesting uh, panama case trial in pakistan where prime minister uh, nawaz sharif is being tried for this whole him and his family is being tried for this whole money laundering case i have with me riaz haksab and then ms azam uh, let me begin with you riaz so you saw the clips prime minister modi you know getting a warm welcome in israel uh, and then few of the community leaders came up and you know said you know gave him very warm welcome including the ahmadiyya community leader and the video has been viral so tell me how does this whole whole you know power dynamics play out this is the first official visit of an indian prime minister to israel yeah so about the the uh, meeting with the ahmadiyya uh, right. community leader uh i know personally uh, that there is a significant ahmadiyya community in israel uh i've been uh, to israel several times and during my visits i uh, I learned of their presence and I also saw a very large uh, Ahmadiyya mosque in Haifa okay. which is quite visible. Well, is it good or is it bad? Well, I think uh, the, the 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 message uh, in Pakistan at least will not be very positive uh, right. from uh, uh, from the fact that the Ahmadiyya community leader is meeting with uh, Prime Minister yeah. Modi right. welcoming him and then the and the Prime Minister Modi saying to him uh, that we are very close to Ahmadiyya community. This will not be so, taken as, as yeah, very yeah. positive so that in Pakistan. That this could impact the community in Pakistan. Could create. I'm afraid that it might yeah. cause some problems for them, which would be very unfortunate. But you know, things are. And, and most interestingly, conspiracy theorists in Pakistan will have something to discuss. Yeah, yeah. I just hope there's no loss of life as a result of it. Uh, as to the uh, the Prime Minister uh, 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 Modi's visit to Israel. Uh, you know the the best way uh, the to sum it up uh, was uh, CNN uh, there was a CNN story on it after during the visit that said that uh, 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 Prime Minister Modi uh, is making sure that the Indian army will now have access to uh, latest uh, weapons from Israel that will bolster the capacity of the Indian army against this main geopolitical rival Pakistan mm. specifically mentioned Pakistan it could also so did they specifically mention pakistan yes see in story that yes. oh, yeah. okay yeah. okay and then it also went on to say that it could also uh, create issues with uh, with the chinese and they, the israeli obviously don't want to upset the chinese because israel also wants to do business with china right and wants to have close ties with china so that's the balancing act that the israelis will have to play uh but you know it's pretty clear over 2 billion dollars worth of uh, you know latest equipment from Israel is being purchased uh, by Mr. Modi uh, he also prior to that he came to the United States where there's also you know was talk of significant arms deals uh, going on so essentially it's the world's uh, largest importer of weapons India uh, visiting these capitals you know United uh, Washington and, and 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 Jerusalem to try and uh, and buy more weapons uh, to us uh, to to enhance its uh, its fighting capacity so that's uh, one of the messages that comes out of it as far as uh, you know both china and pakistan are concerned the other thing to 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 look at uh, is that uh, uh, you know prime minister modi is now visiting a number of countries which essentially are you know, run by very right wing leaders similar to him a part of the same way whether it's uh, you know trump or modi or netanyahu obviously they have their in, in a way their soulmates should pakistan be worried oh absolutely any time india uh, beefs up its uh, you know equip its, its technology its ability to uh, it's an no, should pakistan be worried that he's visiting as well and he's with oh i think so i think it's a matter of worry for pakistan okay mizwa how do you see this yeah uh, let's go a little bit uh, on the history of israel and india relation india um, uh, rec- 1947 uh, Palestine partition of Palestine India voted against them in 1947 uh, 
then uh, in United Nations bid to be a member of United Nations, Israel's bid, India voted against that. However, in 1950, India recognized Israel. 1953, India allowed uh, some kind of consulate in Bombay, which is Mumbai now, you know. Uh, so, we allowed the Israel consulate Israel to be consulate open in to Mumbai. Be in Mumbai. At that time it was Bombay. Right. And at this point, uh, India is the largest buyer of um, Israeli military hardware at this time. And this deal, they say, is the largest in Israel's history. That's correct. The one uh, that he just signed with, yeah. uh, with India. Yeah. And Israel's uh, second largest supplier uh, after Russia. Israel, India, Israel is the second largest military hardware supply, supplier to India. After, first, after, after Russia. Russia. First is okay. Russia, second is that. 1999 to 2009 military business between these two countries were nine billion dollars between between nine, israel and india israel and india military hardware military hardware, hardware business was about nine, nine billion, billion dollars between 2005 to 2000, 2000 1999 to 2009 so in 10 years nine billion dollars nine of trade billion on military dollars, yeah. equipment okay. and as of 2014 india is third largest trade partner of israel in 1914, uh, 2014, uh, bilateral trade, uh, excluding the military hardware, was 4.52 billion dollar between mm -hmm. Israel and uh, and uh, in uh, 2015, when there was a poll, who is a symp who sympathized more to the Israelis? Uh, you know, India yeah. is a 58 percent people say they sim sympathize all the this is a worldwide uh, survey so that's like like 50, you. that's correct 58 percent of people in india in said india they say sympathize yes, with correct. israel yes but in us they say 56 percent only mm -hmm. so going back so uh, to tell all these things that india and israel um, you know like they had a secret relations going on for a very long time mm -hmm. from 1950 if you will i mean after uh, india recognized israel uh, now, but there is certain dynamics to all this. Uh, uh, Mr. Modi is going to Israel, uh, and then he is he's having this um, uh, issues with China, uh, mm -hmm. Doklam uh, Plateau. You know, uh, suddenly they move their right. army, and there is a fight there. It seems that uh, India is Mr. Modi trying to woo United States. Uh, they want to show them that we are close to you, more closer to you, and then you should be helping us with uh, sophisticated hardware and all. Mm -hmm. I personally believe that uh, Pakistan, I agree with Jayasa, Pakistan should be keep their eyes open should on be worried, this issue, okay. should be worried. But I don't consider it too much because no. because because you see it is India is uh, about to lose allies also because now Iran first time Iran is because uh, now he is meeting with uh, Israel Modi. because Prime Minister Modi is meeting with Israel Iran. Iranians are not welcoming Iranians are saying. not welcoming and they gave the statement against uh, the the human right human right violations in Kashmir so that will go to, that is going to hurt India India cannot. And India, most of the things, India is just trying something that they have to push Pakistan. Okay. You know, that Real, is the Real, whole Real, thing. Real, they are Biswa brought up a good point that, you know, th this will change the, the relationship of India with other countries, including in Iran. How do you see this? Yeah, I think the, 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 the bottom line that, that I see, you know, I, I saw the, uh, the statement that uh, Prime Minister Modi made today. Uh, at the G20 summit mm -hmm. in Hamburg, Germany, his uh, main focus was Pakistan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And wherever he goes, regardless of the agenda for the meeting, regardless of uh, all the other discussion, his thrust continues to be Pakistan. So this is basically, you know, it's just that Hindu nationalist uh, frame of mind that he has, you know, that basically drives all of his uh, thinking, his politics, uh, in terms of uh, Islamophobia and Pakistanophobia. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that's what he's doing right now. I mean, China, obviously, U U.S. wants mm -hmm. to use India as a counterweight to China. But, China. but India is much more interested in using everybody else to uh, uh, basically Pakistan. hurt Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hindu nationalists were always supportive of uh, Israel, the Goldwalker, Savarkar, Savarkar, they all gave, went against Nehru's policies, 
that why Nehru is not allowing them to have a, not only the consulate but the embassy and why they don't we have a diplomatic relationship. No, but that's a very complicated history. I think Bull Walker and Savarkar also praised Hitler when he was killing well, Jews. That's because true. at that time, yeah. he they in fact said that, you know, look, we told you that it's very hard for different uh, cultures to coexist. Mm -hmm. And what, uh, you know, Hitler is doing is something we can learn from. In, mm -hmm. in India, they, they said we have the same problem. We have Muslims. Mm -hmm. And these guys are different from us. So essentially, what, what they were saying was they were essentially mm -hmm. praising final solution as a way uh, to deal with Muslims. Hitler's final solution as a way to deal with Muslims in India. So that is their, their thinking. That is the bottom line for them. Yeah. Actually, the problem is that they were saying anything which helps them, help their narrative. Right, right, right. Help their narrative. After but, that uh, was over, uh, they were starting right, supporting them. Right. That is the Let's move to the next topic. Uh, North Korea tested the intercontinental ballistic missiles. Ryazak, you how, how will that change the power dynamics of uh, East Asia? I think uh, of all the different flashpoints in the world. Mm -hmm. The most dangerous flashpoint today is the Korean Peninsula. Not ISIS, not no, Iraq, no, not no, Syria, no. not Kashmir, the, the not The one that has the greatest potential of escalation into a nuclear war is in, in, in Korea. Now, let's, there's a little bit of history here. Let's, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Back in 1950, when China was still very young, you know, they had only been a year or two uh, for the communist takeover, mm -hmm. the communist revolution in China. There was a war in Korea. Mm -hmm. And what the Americans tried to do at that time, General MacArthur was leading the American forces in, in Korea, is he tried to basically take back North Korea. Mm -hmm. And China warned them that if you cross the 38th parallel line, which is where the, the demarcation between North and South, if you cross that mm -hmm. line, we will directly, China said, we will directly enter the war. Mm -hmm. MacArthur ignored China's warning. He thought, hey, what are these guys going to do there? You know, you remember, China was still very young, very right. weak, they are they're very poor at the time. And he basically underestimated the Chinese. Mm -hmm. And he decided to go, and then the Chinese came in in large numbers and pushed back and killed a very large number of Americans and other American allies, you know, forces from Turkey, uh, from Australia, from Britain. A number of these countries were involved in that war, and a lot of them were killed. So it was heavy casualties as a result of the, ignoring that warning. Now today, you know, fast forward today, if America thinks that the Chinese are going to just stay out of this, and allow the United States to ride roughshod mm -hmm. over North Korea, I think that's, that's a mistake. Because the Chinese will not allow Americans to go into Korea, allow North Korea to be, to collapse, which would essentially reunify North and South Korea and bring the American troops to the Chinese border. And that is totally unacceptable to the Chinese. And they, they so they so that's it. why I think Americans, whatever ta actions Americans take, they need to be aware of the history here, that they don't want to start a war with the they Chinese. They want to do some good calculation. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And, and that's a huge concern at right. this point. I mean, I mean, this guy, Graham Allison, who has just right. written a book about destined for war between India, between the United States and China, he says that the biggest flashpoint today mm -hmm. is in, in Korea. Is it? So, so, Ms. Well, you heard what Riyadh just said, and this is pretty alarming. Mm -hmm. And I hope the uh, U.S. does a good calculation. And what makes it worse, I think the biggest problem is that we have two very unstable leaders on the two sides. You've got uh, Kim Jong Un yeah. uh, mm -hmm. as a North Korean leader, and you have Trump yeah. as, as the U.S. president. And that is a very dangerous thing. I hope that there are people to restrain them. Mm -hmm. Ms. Well. Yeah, actually, uh, pretty much we all say uh, everything. Uh, I have not too much to add into it, but uh, obviously that when you think, uh, like uh, he gave the reference of uh, Graham Allison book, I'm also reading nowadays that same book, and 
and he's uh, giving the um, example of Polynesian war between uh, uh, between uh, Athens and uh, Sparta, mm -hmm. Sparta. Mm -hmm. and that's what he's exactly trying to say that both sides used to think that it would be just uh, we will be easily they were not uh, anticipating that retali yeah, retaliation yeah. right well, but, but, it but, was basically a miscalculation yeah but, but in, interestingly that uh, in in case of the Spartan uh, king uh, Archimedes Archimedes was the only one in that conflict who believed that uh, this is this may not it may not going to work. But the thing is that that his council, all the council, all his uh, uh, it, right, yeah. Right. So this situation gets very difficult because see the main reason why the whole council decided to go to war against Athens was that if we don't do it, then Athens will grow more on us. Mm -hmm. And that was their miscalculation, you know. And for third, three decades war, all those part of one day in the end. But mm -hmm. what happened? The whole Greek culture destroyed us. Right. You know. Right. So it is a very so it's an alarming situation. It's an alarming situation. Uh, uh, so as we have said, this is the, the, one of the most dangerous conflict is North Korea. It is right. Mm -hmm. Not not ISIS, not Syria, not Iraq, not Afghanistan. This is it. And, and keep in mind that uh, next to that there is another flashpoint sitting there, which is. The China Sea, yeah. Right. Then another flashpoint sitting there between India and China, Sikkim, and these areas. Yeah, South, South Asia, South Asia, South Asia, South, right, right, right. You know that try. So uh, fire could expand. Fire could expand okay. very Let's, fast. You know. Okay, look, in the interest of time, we move to the next next topic. Panama, GIT. You've been hearing Riaz, what has been happening? You know, Maryam Nawaz, the daughter of Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, has been appearing. His son has been appearing. Where where do you see this going? I think it seems from the very aggressive statements that now we're cheering mm -hmm. against the JIT from the Prime Minister himself and from uh, his children, uh, right. from the ministers, that things are not going well for the Sharif family. Yeah, they are probably hoping for negative. Yeah. And right. they were actually, when, remember when the first verdict came out where they said we need to set up a JIT, they welcomed that not only welcome, they actually just distributed Swiss, they celebrated right. it. Right. And now they're very angry. So it seems to me, we don't know the exact details of what's going on inside, but it seems to me that JIT is asking them very tough Question, questions, right. asking them very aggressively, and they are very afraid well, that things might go against them. So they may get convicted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So Ms. Ba, what Raj just said, and I think I'm also you know, kind of seeing the same thing, that. Probably, uh, you know, his uh, Prime Minister's children, uh, Marie Nawaz and Hussain Nawaz, they're probably sensing a negative outcome of this GIT, and this is why they are coming out and, you know, m making some serious allegation on GIT. Uh, well, uh, well, this is, uh, we are just reading minds of people. I mean, I don't uh, think that, uh, I don't know what is happening. I mean, the thing is that you and I can sit We're down and okay. uh, body no, like... Why are this being the case? Why are this No, actually, the they, there are some legitimate reasons also. The way the GIT was formed, it, it is start, things start changing there, you know. Court had court gave everything in the hand of I, ISI now. ISI is controlling their uh, administrative uh, part, their secretarial part. They are all controlling that. So obviously they have uh, this concern that uh, you can see it. Dharma was uh, uh, Imran so Khan, Dharma was protest. supported by uh, ISI uh, ISI chief that time. You know, I mean, well, he was retired that time. Obviously, he was not. So you're saying this is a military conspiracy against the Okay, okay, or... okay. Don't please don't put word in my mouth okay. that what I'm saying. I'm saying mm. very simple thing. I'm okay. saying that if uh, you see from the point of view of Sharif family, mm. okay, Sharif family would do that. I mean, the thing is that this would happen. That what Imran Khan is doing. He's uh, kind of. When the case goes against him, he start trying to make uh, the start pulling. Uh, yeah, no, no. He start making the controversial those institutes. Sharif is doing the same thing. Okay. He's not doing anything which I never expected. Yeah, but JIT should be very careful. You know, I mean, uh, picture released and then they are not talking about it. Then uh, you know this. Uh, uh, they were calling on the FaceTime and uh, nobody knows what happened and now they say that uh, Supreme Court allowed them under section 190 Supreme Court has a right they could say yes we are going to do it why they are hiding why they are doing it everything underneath 
last uh, two weeks ago, Riyadh asked me this question that uh, what is the difference between uh, Supreme Court not doing, people doing? Supreme Court is with people, right? It's true, it's a valid question. But the thing is that when I say that the Supreme Court should do, it should be done through proper channel. That they should be openly written there the way Supreme Court does things. Mm -hmm. It's not individual, doesn't pick the phone and say I am Supreme Court and do this thing. So uh, their concern is there but uh, as far as I see it, I see nothing new about it. I was kind of expecting they will try to do everything okay. to make it controversial. And oh, wait, wait, you, you were expecting uh, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif and his party to make yeah, the JID controversial. You are saying this is, they are just following the culture we have in Pakistan. Uh, everywhere, everywhere it happens. I mean, uh, politicians do these things. And tenth, mm -hmm. it is not going to be a verdict. It's not that, that um, uh, five judges would say, okay, okay go now you are. Right. Uh, you know, they, there was the trial will Yeah, they will put on, it right. in the, uh, it can go okay. further. Okay, yeah. Riyaz, you can put any remarks. Yeah, I think they're preparing the ground to essentially play the victim card. Okay. Well, I'm sure. To show know. that uh, there is a conspiracy against them yeah. right. if it goes, if things go against them. Right. Uh, so that uh, when come, when the next election comes, they can go in and say, hey, look, you know, we're Shaheed. Yeah. Uh, right. We're we'll being true. a victim of these conspiracies. We need to back to get yeah, the power. Please help us. Because election I mean, this victim card has been played by just about every politics in Pakistan. At different times. And it delivers results. Yeah. It delivers results. Right. And then elections. So try to earn people's right. sympathy. Right. And elections are not too far away. Riaz, Mizwa, thank you so much. Our audience uh, will be back next week with more topics. Can continue watching Viewpoint for more seats.